Deputy Deary. Uh, thank you, Concord. Uh, thank you for uh, choosing this particular topic today. It's an issue that has come to my attention the last period of time. Uh, I suppose, in my opinion, really, I suppose it's also come to attention, as been mentioned here in this House on many occasions over the last period, on the availability of orphan drugs or drugs specifically designed to diagnose and prevent life threatening or chronically debilitating rare diseases. It's becoming an increasingly common uh, issue where, in Ireland where more and more orphan drugs fail to secure reimbursement by the HSE. And many of these drugs are available right around Europe, and in fact, uh, in most cases, in a lot of cases, Ireland is the only country that hasn't got the availability of these drugs. Uh, while obviously not every orphan drug proposed to the state will represent a workable agreement, there is growing discrepancies in the availability that suggest there are bar barriers that exist to provide the latest uh, me medicines that are available to cure these rare diseases. Well, um, there is a rare disease uh, plan in place in Ireland since 2014. The Rockless Health Committee has been dealing with this on a regular basis. Uh, there appears to be a breakdown in communications. There are two particular areas whereby uh, it is a cut between two stools to a certain extent. The HCC having the statutory responsibility for pricing the supply of medicines. However, the HCC themselves find themselves to be governed uh, by a policy set by the government uh, through the Health uh, Pricing Supply and Medicine Goods Act 2013. But at the same time, they seem to be falling through this particular uh, two cracks, uh, and one does not know how to be able to handle the other. So, additionally, the framework that exists where, whereby uh, the state and industry and deal with a agreed time frame for involvement. But unfortunately, over a period of time, we are left with a situation which is very slow and very cumbersome. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the, the child in particular who may have the, the, the difficult a diagnosis or a mission may have the disease waiting to be cured, unfortunately could have passed away by the time the actual medicine is made available, which is a very difficult uh, for the family, if it is in particular case if it is a child, it is a very difficult situation for the family. So really what I am asking the Minister is if you could look at this again, bring back to the power, look at the idea of could it be more streamlined, where it could be made available, the process of making available these drugs in the event that they are suitable, uh, the process of making them available, not having to go through this very protracted and drawn out process whereby you know, the child who may be diagnosed or the, the person might be diagnosed today and the drug may not be made available for a couple of years down the line. And the importance of dealing with this and giving the care and attention in a very uh, efficient and very fast way is the only way of dealing with a particular diagnosis. So I think it's important that we come with a more fast track approach to this particular uh, issue. If that could be done, we've seen, and this House has there's been a number of different issues this, uh, the debate over a period of time in this House, so different drugs uh, that have become available right around Europe, but not available here in Ireland. Uh, and that system has to be approached, in my opinion, whereby we have to be on the same plane. We should be on the, play on the same playing field as everybody else. If somebody gets sick in Ireland, and if their drug has to be available here, they should not have to go elsewhere to avail of that drug in order to cure the illness they may have. So basically, the way I'm looking for ministers, if the system could be changed to make it more um, user-friendly, so that the process of uh, this drug being approved and being reimbursed by the HSC and by the government can be more fast-tracked to make sure that the person who requires this particular medicine can get it when they want it. Deputy Deary for raising this issue. I appreciate that a rare disease diagnosis places enormous stress on patients and their families, and as Deputy Deering is aware, access to potentially beneficial medicines for the treatment of rare diseases is an extremely important issue for patients and their families. I want to assure Deputy Deering uh, that the Minister for Health works tirelessly to address issues around access for patients to new and innovative medicines. The Oireachtas has put in place a robust legal framework in the Health Pricing and Supply of Medical Goods Act 2013, which gives full statutory powers to the HSC to assess and make decisions on the reimbursement of medicines, take account of a range of objective factors and expert opinion as appropriate. The Act specifies the criteria to be applied in the make of reimbursement decisions, which include the clinical and cost effectiveness of the product, the opportunity cost and the impact on resources that are available to the HSC. While the 2013 Health Act does not include provision for a specific rule, a specific rule set when assessing orphan drugs, the HSC and the NCP seek as far as possible to take into account issues such as the small patient numbers and the nature of the condition to be treated when evaluating these medicines. The criteria that apply to the evaluation process allow sufficient scope for the HSE to take on board the particular circumstances that pertain to orphan drugs. In reaching its decision, the HSE will examine all the relevant evidence and will take into account such expert opinions and recommendations that are appropriate, including from the National Centre for Pharma Economics. 
The Deputy rightly identifies that increasingly drugs are being developed to target very rare conditions and that these drugs often come with very high list prices. In that respect, the HSC is required under the Act to have regard to the funding challenges that these drugs represent. It does this by drawing on the criteria contained in the Health Act, including the potential or actual budget impact of the drug in question and the cost effectiveness of meeting health needs by supplying a particular item rather than providing other health services. These are difficult decisions, but recognise the core challenges of the availability of finite resources in the face of ever competing demands. Since the signing of the four year framework agreement on the supply and pricing of medicines in 2016, a significant number of orphan drugs have been reimbursed by the state. Notwithstanding the challenge which orphan drugs present and the fact that the HSE and CP are mindful of these issues when assessing orphan medicinal products, a number of changes have been introduced to address those challenges. In June 2018, the Technology Review Committee for Rare Diseases was established. This committee is now operational and has already completed work in relation to orphan products. As well as examining the methodologies for assessing orphan drugs, it will also consider the views of patients, caregivers, and at the wider issues that go into health technology assessments. In addition, the composition of the HSE Drugs Group is being expanded to include two representatives from the National Patients Forum and more clinical expertise in the area of rare disease. Both of these measures are intended to provide greater balance and transparency to the assessment process as a whole. The challenge of accessing innovative medicines at affordable prices is one shared by most, if not all, developed countries. It is estimated that in the region of 45 new molecules are due to receive market authorisation in Europe each year over the next five years. It is in this high-tech space, including orphan drugs, that the greatest challenges will arise in the years ahead. A significant development on Ireland's international agenda was joining the Beneluxa Initiative on Pharmaceutical Policy in June 2018. This collaboration will support the government's objective of cooperating with other European countries to identify workable solutions in an increasingly challenging environment to secure timely access for patients to new medicines, including orphan medicines, in an affordable and sustainable way. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Deary. Uh, thank you, uh, Concord. Thank you, Minister, for your very comprehensive reply. Uh, first of all, I'd I'd like to welcome uh, the initiatives that have taken place in this year in particular. Uh, since June, I think it's been a welcome development that this has taken place. But at the same time, I'd like to see uh, that we could put a timeline on some of the, co the consequences of this particular review that has been on ongoing at the moment. I think if we had a timeline, I think it would be important that it would be made public. Also, I think it might, might be the point, uh, probably a point that I should have made earlier on. I think it's important that these drugs are, are affordable as well. That the state is not on the hook to some of these particular large companies that can, from time to time, take advantage of our small numbers. I think it's important to point that point, point out as well. But at the same time, I think the crucial point in the overall discussion here today is that people who want these drugs, the patients who want these drugs, they want, if they're sick today, they don't want them in a year, two years' time. They may not be available in two years' time to avail of the drug when they become available. So I would like to see this particular uh, initiative that was announced earlier in the year that is making progress to be given a bit of a push on to make it available a lot further so that when the issue arises again, if a particular disease that arises or a child or whatever, a patient that, that may require something uh, that is going to be a huge benefit, benefit to them, that they can access that drug when they want it. If we can have a, a timeline on that so that it can be in a more efficient way going forward. So again, thanks Minister for his very comprehensive reply, but if we could put a timeline on the, the initiative that has been developed at the moment to see if we can we have an end result. Minister Daly, to conclude. Uh, thank you, Arish Kankorla, uh, and uh, thank you, Deputy. Yeah, I absolutely um, will take on the, the challenge he's, uh, the Deputy has presented, which is to uh, put a timeline as well on the, the range of initiatives that have been uh, outlined there in my, in my speech. I'd be happy to do that for the Deputy, and he, you know, he makes a very valid point. I suppose we have to stress continually the the tension that will always there between the state as the purchaser of very, very important drugs and these massive giant pharmaceutical companies who are supplying the drugs and coming in looking for sometimes lot of number type amounts of money for that drug and obviously the state has to ensure affordability not just because of taxation and good fiscal space but obviously our fiscal um, uh, governance but also to ensure that uh, the drugs are available to everybody who needs it because obviously if we pay over the odds for any one particular drug well then automatically you're limiting the amount of people who can avail of those drugs but notwithstanding those challenges the deputy makes some very clear wishes there that we would be more uh, I suppose prescient in our, in our timelines and I certainly will uh, pass that back to the Minister to, to further with the Deputy uh, a more um, accurate timeline. Thank you Minister, that concludes topical issues for today. We move